Hello and welcome to another PyQt video here on the Mad Pony Interactive channel. Today we're going to look at multi-page Python plugins for Qt Designer. This last week I've been working on a multi-page template for our plugin creator for MadQt pip package. We're going to have a look at that template and we're going to also have a look at how we can uh, up update our property editor properties when we change things in, on our widgets. Remember on the last video, uh, I wasn't able to do that. I figured out how, and today we're gonna look at that as well. So what is a multi-page widget? Well, for example, uh, a tab widget is a multi-page widget. You can see that it gives you two tabs here. So basically two pages uh, where you can place stuff in there. One I'm sure you probably used a lot is the stacked widget, also a multi-page widget, as you can see here. You got page and page two. And you can place stuff in there and then change page with these little buttons here. Okay, so that's how, uh, what a multi-page widget is. So we're going to look at uh, how to start a template using plugin, MatQt plugin creator. And we're going to go through that template. To have the multi-page widget accessible to you, uh, you'll need MatQt version 28, alpha 28. So get that if you don't have it. Let's start by opening up our MadQt plugin creator. I'll leave a link in the description below how you can get it. Here we go. And now we have this is multi-page uh, option here. Notice that uh, instead of geometry, you have now size hint up here. This is because this last week I've been messing with this and I figured out that you don't actually need to place your properties in the DOM XML uh, string to have them display inside the Qt Designer. So this is one of the things I removed from the template. Another thing that I improved as well is uh, instead of having separate um, files for task menus and containers, you now have everything in one file in the plugin file. Anyway, let's see what's what's up with this. I'm going to call this my pager here. That's going to be the name of my plugin. Uh, I'll inherit from QWidget and uh, I'll give it one property here. I'll just call it my string prop and I'll set it. I'll, I'll leave it as none. Say OK. I got a property there and I'll just leave everything as it is and say is multi-page and you can see that container and add menu is automatically uh, selected for us because this template already brings a, a task menu and it brings the container extension. The container extension is what's going to be necessary for you to have a multi-page plugin in the first place. So I'm just going to select a, a folder here, an empty folder that I got ready here. Select that folder and I'm going to create that plugin. Okay, now it's done. If I open that folder, you can see these are the files that were created. We have our icon, our widget, our plugin file, and the registration file. I'm going to open up my pager and my pager plugin. Okay, so these are the two files that are of main importance here. Let's quickly see uh, how, how is it looking inside the Qt Designer. So there is my pager. And now if I want to create uh, a template starting from my pager, I can go into custom widgets and select my pager. And now I got my pager here. And you can see I have two little buttons here. I, did, I didn't worry about putting them up there because uh, once you add something to our, well, I don't have any pages because I started as like this, but you can see that we have added something, previous page, next page. And then in here, we got the page set up for like any other container. So I'm gonna insert a page here. And as soon as I do that, that goes up and uh, insert another page here. So now we got two pages and we can, we can add stuff to it and change page here. Okay, so it behaves a bit like a stacked widget. Now, the only reason I added these two buttons is so that you can see how you can add your own controls and make them accessible and usable inside of Qt Designer. You could totally not have these buttons and just change page by clicking on the page, as you can see here. Okay, we got current index, which will change uh, the page for us. And it doesn't change to a page that doesn't exist, as you can see there. And you got current page name, which is basically the object name. So if, for example, you can see that page two up there, if I change this to, uh, let's say, page 26, you can see that the object name changes there. And the same thing happens if I change the object name uh, back to page two and I go back to my form, you can see that now the page uh, has changed to page two. And we also have previous page and next page here and edit something is just a check a check me box that if I uncheck it it's gonna go page uh, zero and if I check it 
it's gonna go page one okay this is all stuff that uh, I, I added here so you can uh, see for yourself how you can do whatever you want to do with the pager uh, of course I, I created my own pager as uh, the the main form but you can also um, add this like that okay so now we have uh, a new pager here with two pages and you can place stuff in there as well okay and change page so that's how it works inside a cute designer let's look at the code I included a lot of comments in the code so that it's easier for you to understand what's going on uh, I just want to go through uh, some key points in the code here in the the main widget we you can see that we have two signals here that we created and we emit these signals from our uh, custom widget and then we catch them inside of our plugin when the widget is created by our plugin as you can see I'm connecting those uh, current index change and I'm, I'm connecting it to um, a method of our plugin and these two methods are down here in our plugin there we go current index change is here and notice for this uh, plugin I go back up we are also inheriting from Q object and the reason why we're doing that and I explained it here the reason why we inheriting from Q object as well and initializing in the in both of them here is that I can down here in current index changed and page name change I can do this and check out which widget is the sender because uh, I can't just do self in, in this situation because it can be become be coming from a different widget we can have multiple instances and we need to figure out which one it, it is what sender is a method of Q object that's why we're inheriting from Q object as well so in current index when the the index changes we get which widget was the sender okay and uh, we check if it's an instance of uh, my my pager, which is my custom widget. We check if it's a widget type, and this is a Q object as well, a Q object uh, method. And then we grab the form, and this Q designer form window interface. If you look it up, it has a few methods that you can use. Uh, right here, we're using a static method. Uh, find form widget, uh, find form window, so that we can get the form and use the form methods. So uh, then I check if the form exists, and then we can see here we got a, a little um, comment saying why why are we doing this? So I'm grabbing the form cursor, and down here I got form cursor is a Q Designer form window cursor interface, which has some other methods like set widget property, and this is what we're using. We're forcing the widget property to be set so that we can see it in real time reflected in the property editor inside a Qt Designer. In PyQt 5 we used uh, a SIP cost and, um, but PySite 6 uh, doesn't have SIP, it has Shiboken and Shiboken doesn't have a cost. I tried to do this with um, a meta object, trying to cost with a meta object, but that didn't work. And then I figured out that we can use Q Designer form window cursor interface to force the property to change in real time. Now you can check out other methods for the form cursor interface and the Q Designer form window interface. There's quite a few methods that let you interact with Q Designer, so I would strongly suggest that you check them out. And one thing that I also changed when you're creating new plugins is adding the slot decorator. When you add a slot decorator in your widget, this will make sure that the method that you're adding it to will show up in the slots inside the Qt Designer. So before we move on to the plugin, I just want to look at the, the initialization of, of this class, of the widget class. So for the pages, we have to place the pages somewhere. And the way I, do that, I did this was just creating a, a normal list, a normal Python list and I'm placing the pages inside of this list for the current index notice that I start the the current index as minus one the reason why is because if you want to start a multi-page plugin inside a cute designer with no pages to start with which is the case when you start a new plugin and instead of choosing Q main window you choose your plugin 
um, if you started with an uh, index of zero, it's going to give you an error. So we have to start with minus one, like we have no pages. Uh, the pages get added in the, inside the XML string. As you can see here, in our DOM XML, we're adding two pages here to start with. But if I start to plug in uh, a window that is based on this plugin, uh, these pages are not going to get added. So we need to tell it that it is minus one, there's no pages in there. These pages get added once the plugin is initialized. So when you you drag one a plugin inside your Qt, Qt Designer, it's going to look at this code and it's going to see, well, oh, okay, I have to add this page and this page. And that that's going to run through your container um, extension. We're going to look at that in a second. It is also necessary to have this in here. Without it, your plugin is going to work perfectly inside a Qt Designer, but then when you move it into a project, it's not going to be the same thing. It's going to have some problems. Okay, so if I navigate all the way up in here in our plugin, notice we have an import OS here. I, I could have used something from Qt, but I, I used import OS. And just to gra grab the current directory. And the only place I'm using this is for our image. Remember in previous versions we had our image with um, with a full path and in, in this version we have this current directory where I'm joining the current directory to the name of the image. This is just a small step we're taking for if you're trying to distribute your plugins. You don't have uh, a full path in there. Now for the pager I imported everything from Qt Designer. You can improve, obviously improve that. I, I left a, a note here. You can improve that by only importing the stuff that you require. Now for the factory, remember we had uh, the factory in a separate uh, file. In this version I just created one factory that is going to register all our extensions. And in this case we need the container extension. And that's basically the, ex the extension that is required for us to have the insert page, the page menu that shows up inside a Qt Designer. So these extensions get registered inside of our plugin if I come down here in the initialize function. So for example, if you want to remove the, top, the the menu, you could just uh, remove this line of code and now you don't and then you would have a menu. Now there are two more extensions that you could add if you like to this dictionary and that's the property sheet and the member sheet extension. Now I wasn't able to use them because of that zip cost that we we're talking about, so I didn't add them. Let's look at our container extension. I left a, a few uh, notes here that you can look at and figure out how this works. Uh, I think it's pretty explanatory, everything that I left here. So you guys can have a read through that. I don't think I need to do this, but basically what this does is this add widget, for example, or insert widget. This is what happens when you click on insert, insert page inside a Qt Designer. It comes down to this function. And the page is an empty queue widget that is provided by Qt Designer. That's the page that he adds to uh, the interface and gives it back to you so you can do stuff with it. Basically what we're doing, we're just calling the insert page in our widget and the insert page here, uh, we called it as a slot here. I don't think it's necessary to do that, but I, I did anyway. You can have a look in and figure out for yourself what's happening here. I, I want to, like I said in the previous video, we weren't able to, through the dialogue, change parameters. And so here uh, in our task menu, I have a, a dialogue just like I had on the other ones. And we can see that we already have the previous and next page actions that uh, we looked at when I was looking at the plugin. We also have the pop-up uh, dialogue that does that checkbox that we looked at. And I, I want to add something else to this dialogue and change that property that we added when we created our widget. Okay, here they are. And notice that uh, in this version we have set, set, and get. And remember, if I wanted to use this set, uh, my string property to show up in Qt Designer, uh, all I had to do is uh, place a decorator here, same slot, and say the type. Okay. Uh, we got set and get. This is so that there aren't any conflicts and. Uh, we should have it down here as well. Here we go. My string property. So that it doesn't, it's not, the, the name is not my string property when we get it as well. Anyway, let's use this string property to go into our um, dialogue here and use it. So we already have a checkbox. Now I'm going to add um, a 
a Q-line edit. And I'm going to add it to our layout that is set up, up here. Okay. And I might as well set the text for this line edit to start with our widget property that we called my string prop. And I could also do the get method here. Okay. I'm going to comment that out for a second. Okay, so this means that uh, whenever the dialog pops up, it we will fill it with the current string property that, that the widget already has. So then I'll grab this line edit and I'll come down here to... I'm coming down to the task menu itself and I'm looking at the pop-up dialog and if the user says OK, it's accepted and it comes down here. So down here, we already have widget because we grabbed it up here, okay, when we initialized it, the task menu. So we can say my widget set my string property and then we grab the dialog and we can grab the line edit from the dialog like that. In, in, the, in the example, I created an index uh, method and you can see it here. That's the index method. And basically, the index method is just returning uh, if the check if the checkbox is checked or not. We could do the same uh, in our case here, but I've I've decided to grab the dialog line edit, see what text is in there, and place that text inside of our string property and set that string property. Now, if I leave it like that, let's check out what happens in Qt Designer. So I'll just create a widget here. Um, Okay, just a form, and I'll place my pager in there. And you can see there's our string property, started as none, like we asked it for. And if I'm going to edit something, I now have that Q line edit in there. And if I say uh, something, set it to something and press OK, notice that my string property didn't update. Uh, the current index is always going to update, but if I click on it, now it updates. But the problem is, notice that current index is b in bold. That means that it changed, but my string property is not in bold, which means that this didn't, didn't create an undo uh, step. So if I close my form now, this is not going to be saved. So to force an update here, we're going to look how we can do that. Now, the reason why the current index forced an update is because down in our plugin, down here, when the current index change, we already do that, as you can see here. Okay, so I am actually going to copy this code. I'm going to go up there again. Sorry about all this movement. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go up here again. I'll paste that code in, indented. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my widget uh, form, like so, and I'm going to check if really it really grabbed that form. I'm going to access the form cursor and force to set a widget property on our widget, and the property name is our property name which was called initially my string prop and the value of that property is going to be whatever is in that line edit text okay so by by doing this the result will be let's recreate what we just did before grab my pager place it in there and as you can see starts as none and if I double click, because that's my default action, I can now say something, press OK. And now you can see that it's it's bold, which means that it created um, an undo step and this was actually accepted. Before I leave, I want to give a shout out to um, someone who commented on our video about Qt Designer Quick Start. Uh, Charles Starbuck, he commented that uh, how we can access in Qt Designer the code that is being generated in Python, like this. Remember, we had this problem before. What Charles recommended is that we do the following. If we go into our lib, 
inside of our uh, Python, go into our lib and our site packages, and then we look for PySite, look for PySite 6, and in here you can uh, create a new folder called bin, and inside that folder you can uh, place this file UIC, so if I press U and I look for this file, I can copy this file here and place that file inside uh, the folder that I created. And by doing that, we have access to, to the code, to the form code. So thanks for that, Charles. Extremely helpful, helpful tip. I also want to show you what happens if we create a project with Project Manager where we add these um, plugins to it. So I'm just going to create a new project here with the Project Manager say new project and I'll place it in this folder that I previously created say so create project and I'll create a new UI here maybe in, in prob probably in, in future versions I'll change this to so that you can add any type of um, a widget to start with but for now let's just create this main window check if it's running and it's okay now there's something new here and it's called plugin paths and this is basically where are your plugins for example if in this new uh, in, in this new project that I created and if I drag this uh, main window inside of my Qt designer if I drop that main window in there and I add my pager plugin in here and I'll just um, you know what I'll, I'll, I'll use different stuff in here and I save this and then go back into my project refresh well this pops up basically it's telling me that it found that pager uh, plugin in our UI but that uh, it's not in the plugins directory so it gives us other options like removing the plugin from the UI but the, the preferred option would be to add the plugins directory to plugins path so if I press OK here and I go into settings and I now add that directory for my plugin where I added my plugin and it was this plugin tests that's where I added that new plugin if I select that now I have that in there and I'll save this now if I refresh that's not gonna pop up anymore and if I run, I have my plugin in here. And now I think that's it for this video. Uh, you now have the power of creating plugins, uh, which is amazing. So the next video is probably going to be about Cube Painter. So I'll see you guys there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Give us a star on uh, the Mad Cute on the Mad Cute project in GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description below. And yeah, take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video.